The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theatre Incorporated, presents Their Only Son, starring Victor Jory, Scotty Beckett, and Joan Carroll. Gary Cooper is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. The other day I got to thinking how things change over a period of years. We kind of pass through cycles and fads. Well, for example, uh, some years ago it was jigsaw puzzles, then everybody took up miniature golf. Then uh, Kilroy came along, and he was followed by the ladies who decided to become old-fashioned and adopt the new look. Yes, we live in a world uh, where a lot of things change, and yet the solid fundamental things in life are the same. The values of the important things don't change. Our belief in God is unchanging. The necessity of prayer is the same today as it was yesterday. Our homes and families are still our most important concern. Principles of right living don't change, and the daily practice of family prayer will always be the surest way to peace and happiness in a home. Gary Cooper will return following tonight's family theater story, their only son, starring Victor Jory, Scotty Beckett, and Joan Carroll. Dad, if I win our high school contest, I have a chance at the state contest. Then I'm eligible for the national and... That's the way to do it, son, every time you have an opportunity. Get on your feet and start talking. Public speaking, the best in school. Why, I, I remember when I... Uh, more coffee, John. Uh, no, no, Vera. I'll have to run. I have that third district political club meeting tonight at eight. I'll just make it in time. Oh, but, Dad, you said you were coming to the oratorical contest tonight. Well, I'd love to, son, but... But when you're in politics, you know, your time is not your own. You're the servant of the people. And winning votes is winning the election. You have to remember that. Your mother will be there to hear you. Oh. I'm sorry, Chet. Business first, you know. Oh, it's it's all right, I... Uh, I guess. Vera, where did I leave my briefcase? There are some important papers... I saw it under your desk, dear. Huh? Oh. oh, yes, yes, I got it. Well, good luck. I'll be home early, I hope. So long, Dad. Bye, dear. Good luck with your speech. Bye-bye. Well, I, I guess I'll amble over to the school hall and kill some time. I'll be seeing you later, Mom. Uh, Chet, I hope you're not going to be too disappointed if I don't go. And Mrs. Todd's having a special sorority meeting tonight, and I promised... Oh, you too, huh, Mom? Well, you know, there are some influential women in the group, and the right contacts just now are so important to your father's campaign. You understand, dear. Yeah, sure, Mom. Don't worry about me. I'll... I'll get along. We'll be home early, dear. There'll be something for you in the icebox. Thanks. Chad? Hello, Chad? Oh, hi, Joan. Got your speech ready? Yeah, I... I suppose so. What's the matter, Chad? Nothing. Oh, gosh, you sound like you sprained your good disposition. Oh, skip it, will you? Hey, Chad, wait for me. Now, what did I say that got you acting this way? Oh, it's... it's not you. I... I got problems. Why? Oh, you're a cinch to win tonight, Chad. What are you worrying about? You wouldn't understand. I heard Susie Pearson practicing her speech this afternoon... She hasn't a chance against you, and she's the only study bug you'll have to worry about. Why, you'll win without even having to turn on your personality smile. 
I'm not thinking about the contest. Chet, what's wrong? Why, this contest was everything you were living for. I already asked Dad if I could go to the state contest to hear you. Then you win that, and I'll bet you'll be national champ. Oh, golly, everybody in the school is counting on you, Chet. Yeah. Well, they're counting on the wrong guy. Are you sick, Chet? No, I'm, I'm all right. Forget it, will you? I want to congratulate all the speakers tonight. I think you were excellent. And now, while the judges are making their decision on the winner of the contest, I want to take this opportunity to thank this splendid audience for being with us on this occasion to encourage these several young speakers. I know they appreciate your generous response to their efforts and want to thank you. The school band will now play a selection while we're waiting to learn who will represent Union High at the state oratorical contest. What happened to your check tonight? What do you mean? It was wonderful. <laughs> what are you trying to do, kid yourself? They just couldn't pick Susie. We'd be humiliated. Imagine her representing Union. Everyone at the state contest would think we were a bunch of droops down here. Well, I don't think Chet deserves to win. He didn't even try. You're a fine pal to have rooting for him. Anyway, you're off the deep end. Chet will win. I know he will. I hope so. For your sake. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Now I'm going to ask Chester Gordon and Susie Pearson to come forward. Right up here, please. Uh, I want to congratulate both of you. The judges had a lot of difficulty coming to a decision, and you were selected in first and second places. <laughs> Don't get so nervous, Miss Pearson. Chester, let me first commend you for all the splendid work you've done. I know how much winning this contest meant to you and to your parents. The decision was very close, so I hope you won't be discouraged. The judges decided that Miss Pearson had a slight edge. She wins to represent Union at the state contest. Congratulations, Miss Pearson. Oh, congratulations, Susie. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Chet. I'm so excited, I just seem to feel weak. Oh, gosh, I think I'm going to faint. Hey, don't do anything like that. Here, come, come over and sit down. I don't know what happened to me. Oh, gee, your, your face is all red-like. Hey, I'll, I'll go ask Dr. Howard to come over. Oh, no, please don't. I'll sit here for a minute. I'll be okay. Oh, are you sure? Yeah. See, I, I feel better already. Chad, why did you fluff off your speech tonight? Oh, hello, Joan. I guess it just wasn't my night, that's all. Chad, you didn't want to win, I know. I could tell before the contest. What's wrong, Chad? Oh, let's not talk about it, will you? It's all over. Oh, golly, I had everybody at home steamed up about letting me go to the state contest. I bet your mother and dad are going to be awfully disappointed. Yeah. Are you feeling all right now, Susie? Just perfect. I'll go along. I see mother and dad waiting. Chad, let's go down to Hawkins and get a Coke. Oh, what's the matter with you, Joan? Don't you want to congratulate Susie? Oh, congratulations, Susie. Come on, snap out of it, Chad. We've been sitting here for ten minutes chewing on your misery. Let's dance. Oh, no, I'm, I'm getting out of here. Got your car tonight? No, Dad went to some meeting. Well, where do you want to go? Oh, I don't know. I, I just want to walk by myself. You're feeling pretty low, aren't you, Chad? Me? No, I'm, I'm fine. Never felt better in my life. You know, it's, it's funny. You go along and everybody's telling you what you to do, how to act, what they expect of you. The easiest thing in the world is to give advice. <laughs> you can certainly get fed up with a lot of good advice, especially when people aren't even interested in what you're doing. What's got into you, Chad? Maybe a little sense. I'm sick and tired of a lot of things around here. Me too, Chad. What? Does that sick and tired routine apply to me? Oh, no, Joan, I'm, 
I'm just disgusted with everything, that's all. I'm going out and walk it off. Forget it. Maybe I'll even grab a train and, and get out of this town altogether. Yeah, maybe that's a good idea. Oh, you wouldn't do a crazy thing like that. Oh, wouldn't I? That only shows you don't know me, Joan. Well, don't do anything you'll be sorry for, please. You said it right in reverse, Joan. I'm going to give up trying to do anything, and I'm not going to be sorry either. I'm going to start giving myself some good advice. So long, Joan. Chet! Chet, wait for me, please! <laughs> Vera, looks as though your house is deserted tonight. Yes, John had one of his political meetings, and Chet was speaking at the oratorical contest. Oh, how nice. Chet's taking after his father. Yes, he's a gifted boy, and being our only son, we've given him every advantage. Well, that's fine. And I think the meeting tonight was a grand success. Well, I'm delighted we passed that resolution to do something for these poor, unfortunate juvenile delinquents. <laughs> you know, that's part of John's platform in the coming election. Something should be done about these parents who neglect their children. I'm sure John will have a progressive program when he's elected. He's so conscientious. Oh, thank you, dear. And good night. Good night, Vera. Mrs. Gordon? Mrs. Gordon, wait a minute, please. Why, Joan, well, what's Something the... terrible has happened. It's Chet. Chet? Why? I think he's run away, Mrs. Gordon. Oh, ridiculous. What are you talking about? Well, after he lost the contest, he was so disgusted that he, he said he was... He lost the contest? Yes, yeah, Susie Pearson was picked first. I don't know what happened to Chet. He just didn't seem to care whether he won or not. Joan, please don't go on this way. Now, what happened? Well, he said he wanted to walk. Well, you said he ran away. Well, you, you see, I saw him go down by the railroad yard. And then it was too dark, so I couldn't follow him. He said he was thinking about running away. Oh, Chet wouldn't do anything so foolish. Why, he's had every advantage of a good home. What would he want to run away from? I went back to the drugstore and tried to get you on the phone. Then I came right over. Hmm. It's 11 o'clock, and Mr. Gordon should be home any minute now. With the coming elections, I couldn't possibly notify the police. Are, are your parents home, Joan? Not yet. They said they were going to drive Judge Branstone home after the contest. Oh. Dear, I just... Mrs. Gordon, look! What? It's Chet. He just came around the corner. Joan, after all the excitement you started, why, well, I... Think... I'd better run over to my house. I'm sorry, Mrs. Gordon. A uh, Chet? Yes, Mom? Where have you been, Chet? Oh, around. I, I took a walk. The contest didn't go so well? No. I'm surprised at you, Chet. I thought you were working hard for the contest. Your father's going to feel very bad about it. You know what he expects of you. Well, you better get right up to your room, and tomorrow I want to have a long talk with you. Oh, there's your father now. Well, you better wait and say goodnight to him. Yeah. What goes on? Looks like a town meeting on the front lawn. Hi, Dad. Hi. How'd it go, dear? Oh, well, we had a great meeting tonight. That's a beehive group in the third district. Well, when I get this town organized, we're going to have something worth talking about. We'll set up Valley Villa as a model for every small town in America. Hey, and I, I don't know when I felt so tired. But, but it's worth it. It's worth it when you know things are going to be successful. We're going to have a fine election. Now, I'd, uh, I think I'd like a snack before turning in. How about you, Chet? Yes, sir. Vera? Uh, no, I think I'll go on upstairs. All oh, right, dear. Well, what'll it be, Chet? Oh, uh, some milk, please. Uh, why so quiet? Huh? Oh, oh, I forgot the, the contest. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you carried off everything as usual, huh? Did you? That's what I like about you, Chet. You're modest. Yeah, but don't you be too modest, son. Don't hide your light under a bushel. I lost the contest, Dad. You what? Susie Pearson won. I, I came second. You lost it. Now, see here, young man. What are you starting to do? Lie down on the job? Why, when I was your oh, age... Oh, yes, Dad, I I know you. You told me about that before. What's the matter, John? You're shouting. Well, I got reason to shout. Here's a young man who's been given every opportunity. I've trained him as a leader. Someone I can be proud of who can follow in my footsteps. And what happens? John, John, don't you think it would be... Do you think it would be better to postpone this discussion until tomorrow? There you go, Vera, taking his side. How do you expect the boy to amount to anything if you're going to coddle him and mother him? I... You excuse his failures. Well, pardon me, Dad. If anything has happened in this house, I haven't been coddled or mothered. 
And this is the first failure I've had, and I'm glad I had it. Jack, don't you speak to your father that way. Mother, I've never spoken like that before. I've always taken everything in silence. I'm John Gordon's son, so I'm supposed to be this and that and everything. I'm supposed to be perfect. Well, I'm not perfect, and I'm sick and tired of the whole thing. That's where I stand now. Young man, go to your room. I'll deal with this tomorrow. And from now on, remember to whom you're speaking. I believe you owe your mother and me an apology. I'm sorry, sir. I apologize. Latin shouldn't happen, but I'll give the answers after fourth period, okay? Well, don't forget, because I'll sure need them. Ted, that was a mean thing you did to me last night. I did? Uh, I did what? Scaring me into thinking you were running away. I went and told your mother and got her all excited. She must think well, I'm that's awful. funny. She didn't say anything to me about it. She didn't? No, and, and anyway, y you shouldn't have... Well, what else could I do? Ted, you know how I feel about you. Oh, it's... It's all right. I, I guess I'm just a guy who does a lot of big talking sometimes. No, Chet. You're just kind of mixed up. For some reason. What's wrong, Chet? Oh, nothing. Everything's fine. Dad gave me an hour's lecture this morning on the family name and fame. You see, we're a, a family of leaders, Joan. You really have a gift of leadership, Chet. Gift of leadership. And sometimes a gift of minding everybody's business when you neglect your own responsibilities. Oh, Chet, I don't know what you're doing. Growing up or getting sour or something. But whatever it is, it certainly isn't nice. <laughs> you know, Joan, it's, it's good to have someone like you around to peer, pin my ears back. You, you kind of do it in a nice way. Chet, you shouldn't have that attitude towards your mother and father. It's wrong. Yeah, I, I guess so. Hey, Chet! Hey, Chet, do you hear the good news? No, what happened? Susie's got the measles. What's this, some kind of a gag? Honest, didn't you notice she wasn't around today? Yeah, but I kind of thought she was taking the day off to celebrate or something. She's celebrating all right with a rash. Hey, that, that's a good one, isn't it? Celebrating with a rash. <laughs> uh, well, Chet Boy, it looks like you're in, hey? Oh, Chet, that's wonderful. Now you really have your chance. You're going to win this time, I know it. Poor Susie. The one chance she was waiting for, and she gets the measles. Hey, what do you say we round up the gang and go down and see her? See her? Why, we'd all get the measles. Besides, she'll be quarantined for ten days. Well, I bet this is a gag some wise guy thought of. They want to see if they can get me all worked up. Did you have anything to do with it, Joan? Oh, no, Chet. This is the first I heard of it, honest. Well, somebody else can take her place, because you're going to have to have the measles. I'm finished with contests. Oh, don't say that, Chet. Come on, let's find out about Susie first. Oh, uh, no, I'm, I'm going home. Oh, Chet, sometimes you can be the most annoying and stubborn person I know. Well, son, all I can say is you're a pretty lucky fellow. Yeah, I, I guess so. You guess so. Why, every kid in Valleyville would give his eye teeth to be in your place. You don't deserve a second chance. Nobody does. That's why I always say never let an opportunity slip through your fingers. You won't get a second chance. Well, you won't get a second chance at the state contest or the national. A lot of people are counting on you. I realize that, Dad, and I'm going to work on this. Good. That's what I like to hear. Avira? Oh, there you are. Yes, dear. You're all dressed up. Where are you off to now? Well, the bridge club is meeting tonight. You see, we had to change the meeting because one of Vera, the... Vera, I don't know why you always have to be on the go. If it isn't a sorority meeting, it's the bridge club or organizing a theater party. John, I, I honestly don't think you realize what I'm trying to do. Hmm. You know as well as I that it's the women who will either make you mayor or defeat you in this election. The least I might expect is a little understanding of what I'm doing. After all, it's not for myself. It's for you. It's for Chet. Vera, it's this running around. We hardly ever see one another. And lately, it seems we hardly ever get together unless there's something to argue about. Well, it's not my fault that you're running for mayor, that you're at one meeting after another. Excuse me, I, I think I'll go upstairs and start on some work. Oh, I'll get it. Oh, it's probably Helen Todd. She said she'd call for me at 7.30. Hello, Chet. Oh, hi, Joan. Oh, hello, Mrs. Todd. Uh, mother's waiting. Be right with you, Helen. Come in, Joan. Okay. I was just going to start some rewriting on my speech. I hope you kids aren't going to make a lot of noise around this house. I've got work to do. Well, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Uh, Dad, maybe Joe and I will go out and walk around a while. We can just as well talk over some of the things I want to change in my speech. That's a good idea, son, good idea. I remember when I was your age, I did a lot of walking. Best thing in the world for young people, walking, exercise, and a lot of fresh air. Yes, Dad, I, I know. Well, 
morning, everybody. Good morning, John. Good morning, Dad. Ah, say, this paper's got some good campaign news in this morning. <laughs> Nothing like good publicity campaign for an election. Uh, have you read my speech yet, Dad? Uh, uh speech? Well, I, I, I left it on your desk last night like you told me. Oh. <laughs> well, that'll be, that'll be the first thing I'll do tonight, son. Oh, but, Dad, t tonight's the contest. Tonight? Well, I, uh, well, I thought, uh, uh... Look, uh, son, you know, I got so many things on my mind with this election business that... See here, I'll, uh, I'll have a look at it right after breakfast. Well, I'm surprised, John, you didn't help Chet with something as important as the state contest. Did you read his speech, Vera? John, I hope you don't expect me to take care of the speech department in this household, too. Oh, it, it doesn't matter. It'll, it'll be all right, I guess. Sure, sure it will, son. Be better if you do it by yourself. I know. I'm a self-made man. Always had to do things the hard way. Never had somebody at my elbow coaching me, no, sir. Do it alone. That's my motto. Make a man of you, Chet. Yeah, I, I guess so, Dad. Well, dear, we'll be there to cheer you on tonight. Vera, have you forgotten that we have a campaign dinner tonight? Tonight? Mm -hmm. Oh, dear. John, our being at the contest means so much to Chet. Nonsense. Chet can get along very well by himself, I'm sure. You don't need me at the campaign dinner? I certainly do. Fine impression I'll make my wife not interested enough to be at the most important event of the campaign. You know, Vera, making the right impression is indispensable for a public personality. Yes, I, I suppose it is. Chet, dear, you don't really mind if we don't go, do you, dear? No. No, I don't mind. I never mind. I didn't mind when I had a part in the school play and you had important dinner engagements. I didn't mind when I played on the basketball team and you never had time to see any of the games. I didn't mind when all the other fellas could have parties at their homes. But we couldn't have one here because you didn't want to be bothered with a lot of us around the house. No, no, I don't mind if you can't come now. I never mind. Chet, this is the second time you've acted this way and I won't... John, John, please, I think enough has been said. No use in you and Chet becoming upset. He has to be off right away to catch the train anyway. You'll be with your friends, Chet. A number of the boys and girls are going with you, aren't they, dear? I, I guess he must have gone. He'll be all right, John. Don't worry. He's just growing up. Hello? Mrs. Gordon? Yes? This is Joan. Is Chet there? No, no. He left the house some time ago. Wasn't he to meet you at the station? He didn't come. Mr. Nelson and a group of us were waiting here. We waited until the last minute, and then when the train came, Mr. Nelson decided to go to Capital City alone. We thought maybe Chet got your car, and we'd be driving up with you later. No, we weren't able to make it. Oh, then I think I know what happened. Mrs. Gordon, we'll find him. We'll have him there even if we have to... Well... We'll get him there, Mrs. Gordon. You can be sure of that. Well, Joan, what are you going to do? Joan? Joan? Number, please. Uh, I was cut off. What number were you calling? Uh, I don't know. Sorry, madam. Well, uh, uh, get me Sedley, 6724. Thank you. Uh, hello? John. Yes, Vera? John, you and I are going to the contest tonight. I, I won't to take it. no for an answer. I'll be down at your office at three, and I'll explain everything. Throughout the history of America, we have stood forth on these principles of justice. We stand today on these same principles. Isn't that Chet speaking, John? Oh, Mr. Gordon, Mrs. Gordon, I waited here in the lobby. Chet's just finishing his talk. Can we go in? I saved some places at the back of the hall for you. Oh, I just knew you'd come. Well, we wouldn't have been here at all except for you, Joan. I'd have never been able to convince Mr. Gordon that this was more important than his campaign dinner if you hadn't called a second time. We really had a difficult time with Chet. He really meant to run away this time. Well, don't let's stand here talking. Let's go in and hear something of what he's got to say. Yes, John. It's a world on. without God. The only final end of a communistic world could be utter chaos, where the atomic bomb might well be the means of mankind's self-destruction. <laughs> I guess you're disappointed I didn't win, Dad. Well, I'd feel happier if you did, son. But it's good to be a good loser, too. 
I know. I just lost a round myself tonight. But your mother's right. From now on, the family comes first. You can't really say you lost, Chet. Oh, I... I lost all right. Uh, what do you mean he didn't lose, Joan? Well, he had to give a speech without a script. Without? Oh, what do you mean? Yes, he didn't tell us he left it at home until we got him here. Didn't tell you? How could I do anything? There were about six guys sitting on me in the car all the way here. Well, we promised Mr. Nelson we'd get you here. And we did it. You gave the whole speech without any script, dear? Oh, that was about it, Mom. <laughs> Say, uh, Chet. Yes, Dad? How would you like to deliver my next campaign speech? (laughs) (laughs) This is Gary Cooper again. You know, marriage should be the basis for developing the best in everyone. It should awaken unquestioned loyalty. It should be the means of giving us an understanding and appreciation of the place sacrifice has in everyone's life. Marriage should mean not only a home, it should mean children and the keen delight of seeing them grow fine and strong. And yet marriage is sometimes a hollow experience and people are beaten and hurt and bitter. It happens that way. Yes, it always happens that way when marriage is based only on material things. A happy marriage needs an understanding, uh, an understanding of spiritual values. And prayer, family prayer, is the best way of bringing spiritual values into a home. That's why family prayer means real happiness and unity in a home. That's why a family that prays together stays together. Before saying good night, I would like to thank Victor Jory, Scotty Beckett, and Joan Carroll for their performances this evening. Our thanks to Lenore Bigler for writing tonight's play and to Max Terror for his music. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's play were Rena Craig, Florida Edwards, Margaret Muse, Charles Maxwell, Helen Gerald, and Roland Morris. Next week, Our family theater stars will be Virginia Bruce and Dean Stockwell in Mother's Halo Was Tight. Your host will be Gene Kelly. This is Gary Cooper saying good night and God bless you. This series of the family theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week at the same time when our family theater stars will be Dean Stockwell and Virginia Bruce with Gene Kelly as host. Tony Lafrano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>